Honourable Marion Street. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I too would like to add uh, my words of concern and, my, and express uh, the fact that, uh, that my heart goes out to the people of Christchurch as they wrestle yet again uh, with more damage and disruption. I would also like to pay a tribute to Kevin Haig for his speech a few moments ago, which I endorse completely, and I thank him for bringing that subject to, to the House. But today, Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about the fact that families are cracking under the strain of increasing prices and the increase in cost of living in New Zealand. The cost of fresh fruit and vegetables has gone up by 17 per cent between May 2010 and May of this year. 17 per cent, 16.9 per cent to be accurate. I don't wish to exaggerate. People aren't getting ahead under this government, Mr Speaker. They are falling behind. I'm doing a cost of living survey in Nelson at the moment, and people are quick to fill it out. They want the government to know how hard they are finding things, and they want the government to say what its plans are for relief from these incessant increases in everything that they require to provide for their families, from food to fuel. Let me give uh, the House some of the results to date out of the returns on my cost of living survey, and this is in Nelson. 88% say that their household income is more stretched than it was three years ago. 60% have put off visiting a doctor because of the cost. 82% expect stronger action by the government on rising power prices. 79% worry about whether or not they can save anything for their retirement. And 93% think the government is out of touch on cost of living issues. Let me quote from a Nelson resident who responded to a Facebook uh, entry of mine recently. And there is a place for Facebook, despite um, Mr uh, Finlayson's condescension. She said this, I haven't been to the doctor for over a year, as my husband has to go a lot, and we cannot afford for both. And I should be going every three to six months. It's funny, because people say we must spend our money on junk and go out all the time. I don't remember the last time we went out. My hubby and I talk a lot about how things used to be before the Nats got their way. We had a sort of a life. You know when the costs get bad, when your kids are asking to buy the things we used to buy, why don't we do the things we used to do? Mr Speaker, the government is certainly out of touch with this Nelson family situation and there are plenty more people where they come from. Let's look at the distribution of food parcels in Nelson, a place most people associate with sunshine and an abundance of good primary food products. In March of last year, 168 food parcels were distributed. In March of this year, 247. In April of last year, 148 food parcels. In April of this year, 213. In May of last year, 181 food parcels. In May of this year, 223. Families are, are going backwards, Mr Speaker, under this government. This is nothing short of scandalous. The, uh, the government thinks that Labor's policy promise of taking the full 15% GST off fresh fruit and vegetables is comical. Well, I tell, you, I tell this House that that will make a difference to the family I have just quoted. It will make a difference to families like them. This government is in fact making no effort for hard-working families struggling to get by. They've given the lion's share of the tax cuts to the wealthy while constantly cutting away at middle and low income Kiwis. There is no point in them saying that they gave tax cuts to low and middle income earners, beneficiaries and superannuitants. All of those people know that their tax cuts were gobbled up by the increase in GST. There is no plan to contain power prices. The government simply wants to sell off power companies so that we have no levers to use to get power prices down. There is no plan to create jobs, simply the repetition of a number in the budget, but no plan and no demonstration about which sectors of the economy are going to be used to provide these jobs. There is no plan to improve New Zealanders' standards of living. There is no vision for a better New Zealand. The government is working for its wealthy friends or, and for foreign investments and for foreign interests, not for hard-working Kiwi families. 
Mr Speaker, that's why this government has to go in November. The Honourable John Biscard.